Hello, um, my name's Ian. I'm a voluntary uh, volunteer in the archives at St Dunstan's College. Um, here we are today in the archives room. As you can see, there's a multitude of boxes which include um, all sorts of ephemera of interest to people who've been to the school in the past. Um, and this is the first of uh, an occasional series of videos we're going to publish which focus on a particular aspect of um, the school's archives. And today we're looking at um, a sport, um, the sport of lacrosse. Um, not that widely played, but um, has a very interesting history, certainly at St Dunstan's. Um, as you may know, the game originated in North America. It was played by the indigenous tribes there for, for many hundreds of years. Um, it, was, um, it started to become popular among the um, settlers, in, in particularly Canada, uh, towards the middle of the last century. And the name lacrosse um, comes from the time when two French settlers uh, in Canada saw some um, uh, indigenous Americans playing lacrosse. Um, and the stick, and we've got a very old one here, um, but the stick used at that time, um, they thought reminded them of what we call in English a crozier, which is um, a staff that bishops carry in um, processions. Um, the French word for crozier is um, in crosse, so the, the, the crozier in French is la crosse, so that is how the, the name came about. Um, there was a Canadian gentleman called William George Beers, he codified the rules um, in 1867, and prior to that, when it was played by the, the tribes in North America, these games could last for days, they could be played over pitches that were you know, several miles long, it could involve hundreds of people. It wasn't anything like the modern day you see today. Um, so William Beers codified the rules in 1867. Um, it became very popular in Canada, it's still its national sport. And he brought um, exhibition teams to play in the UK, initially in 1876, I think. Um, and they toured around the country, played various exhibition matches. They, that didn't go down too well, I don't think. So he came back about seven years or eight years later in the early 1880s. Uh, with two more teams, um, and this time it was very successful. So they did a number of exhibition matches. Uh, I believe Queen Victoria saw one of them, she was very impressed, and the game just took off from there very, very rapidly. Um, particularly popular in the northwest around Manchester and around London. And um, St Dunstan's, we believe, is the second school in the UK to have started playing lacrosse. Uh, the first was the Lay School in Cambridge, they started in 1885. Um, and we have evidence that St Dunstan started virtually as soon as it opened. So the school opened in 1888, and by the first term of 1889, they were playing lacrosse in, in the spring term. And they were very successful. It was introduced by the then headmaster, Charles Stewart, who was the first headmaster of St Dunstan's. He was a keen player himself and had been to Canada to see it, to see it play. Um, and between... 1890 and 1939, um, the team produced a number of um, cup winning sides. So they competed in what's called the Southeast Men's Lacrosse Association, SEMLA. And I think between those years, between St Dunstan's and the Old Dunstonians, I think between them, they, their teams won 12 intermediate or, or junior cups. Um, so for instance, here, this is one from 1910. Uh, where they're holding their, their what, what they call the flag actually are on the cup. That's 1910 when they were the winners of the junior flags. Um, and I think uh, there's at least three St Dunstan's pupils or former St Dunstan's pupils who went on to get uh, to play for England. Um, and then, then if we look at some of the photos here, um, these go right back to the virtually the start of the school. The first team. I've got here is from 1891, so this is just a year or two after the school opened, they first started playing lacrosse. Um, and then we've got various other teams, 1904, 1905, 1907, 1911, 1914, uh, up to 1926 here. Um, again, this one, they were winners of the junior flags in 1926. Um, another thing that's of interest on these photos, and I just noticed it, a lot of these happened by chance to be from shortly before the, the First World War. So those of you who remember the, the old house system, uh, where there were eight houses named after fallen pupils who, who were killed during the First World War, a lot of those pupils actually appear in these photos. So you have um, M Lane, Lane House, A.L. Thomas, Thomas House. Um, where are the others? I think I found five of them. There's uh, R.C. Bennett, obviously Bennett House. Uh, Thompson and I think 
Griffiths as well. Uh, D. Wilson, Wilson House. And I think there's a Griffiths somewhere as well. Um, so just by chance, and it's quite poignant, that there's actually five of those pupils who gave their names to the houses can be seen there. Um, so the school massively successful in lacrosse between 1890 and 1939. Um, as you may know, in 1939, obviously the outbreak of the Second World War, the school was immediately evacuated to, to Rygate in the first instance and then to, to Wales. Um, and lacrosse as a sport was suspended during that time, I think with the intention that it would resume when the school returned to its um, home in Catford. Um, but that never happened. The school obviously came back in 1943 or 44, um, but lacrosse was never resumed. Um, and I think today it is played on a, in a very minor way by, by some years, not um, competitively, but um, it's no longer really played. Um, and the other thing we have in the archives room here is this, I think I mentioned it earlier, a very old lacrosse stick. Um, I don't know when it exactly it dates back to, but it looks pretty old and it certainly looks more similar to the kind of things they were using in these photos here than you would see in a, in a lacrosse match today. Um, so that's it for now and I'm sure we'll be back talking about something else in the near future.